Right guys, another little job on the bench. Um, I was using my little power supply the other day and switched it on. The volts went straight over to maximum and the magic smoke puffed out of the uh, the top. Took it a bit. First thing I saw was a, a melted capacitor there. Get him in focus. He's a goner. So I replaced that and then got a 35 volt one. That's there. Popped him in, just tried it. Boom, same again, volts over to the maximum. So I wasn't getting involved with fault finding proper. I just jumped in and, and took a wild guess. And there's uh, on the back of this, on a big heat sink, there's a, one of them transistors that are used commonly in power supplies and amplifiers for uh, for power regulation if you like have a, have a zener connected to them etc so they're doing the switching um and i chuck that on the little tester i'll just show you that now so this is the little transistor connected up we've sort of got base emitter collector pins there and it's connected to a little one of these little cheap component analyzers and if i switch that on and test there that's coming up as two diodes and it should be coming up as a transistor if i just get a transistor out my little kit i can demonstrate what it should display So now we've got a little transistor in there. I'll switch that light off up there so it's no glare or less glare. When we test that, we get an MPN transistor with our base collector and emitter indicated on the thing, which is what we should get for that. We're obviously not. I'll just show the traditional way of testing a transistor as well so a transistor effectively is between the base collector and emitter you've effectively got a couple of diodes and a semiconductor in between so if we got between the base and one side of there we're reading a resistance and the other side, straight short. We should read the resistance the other side as well. If we reverse the probes this way, we should get no reading, which we don't. And on there, straight short again. So that transistor is dead. And I've already uh, took the liberty of, if we see it on the video, Taking them details of what it is, an MJ2955, I've ordered some, they're on the way. So uh, in a few days or so, when they come in, I can get this back together and try to say, I, I would like to actually go through the circuit board a little bit. Um, it's not the greatest quality thing, this isn't. Uh, I'm going to do a little drawing of the circuit board just for my own reference anyway, and I'll whip through a few of these components check the diodes and the easy things the resistors usually see and burnt anyway we know that capacitor is new i'll just check these capacitors as well um in fact i'll show you that one in a minute with a different little bit but uh yeah not the greatest ball the track's a bit damaged and things where i've desoldered it it's one of them cheap things where you warm the the PCB up and it pops off the track. Nasty things. Uh, I'll just show you another little trick about how I do the the layout or how, how I have done in the past on things when I've when I've had to do this. I'll try and get a little drawing of this. I'll just check them two little capacitors. So I've got my little power supply PCB in the uh, holder there and you can use all sorts of 
software, taking photos, flipping images and all the things they do on the net. But I'm a little bit old fashioned and um, with a simple single sided board like this, especially with the one with a, a light coloured background. Obviously, this won't work on dark coloured PCB boards. I just put it there. Take the little torch. Shine it through the back and do a little bit of focusing and take a photograph that way. And then we can flip the board round. And we can take a photograph that way and work from them to uh, trace out our PCB layout. Just to aid in fault finding. I'm just going through the capacitors, that's a 3300 microfarad, 35 volt. It's in circuit, sometimes they test, sometimes they don't with this little tester. Just make sure you've shorted it beforehand and flick our little tester on. A good picture, see what we get. 3303 ESR zero we lost three and a half percent so yeah we'll go with that and risk that uh could do the others in the same way sometimes it works as i say sometimes it doesn't if it's in circuit because sometimes you just get a resistance because everything electrically is a resistance whether it's a high resistance partly a resistance or no resistance whatsoever um the other way i can test but ESR is with this little meter, but again, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't when they're in circuit. The only real way is to take them out, desolder them, but on this board, with the way it sort of falls apart a bit when you desolder things, it's easy just to uh, stick it back together. When we get the new um, transistor for in there, and see if it works, I'll probably check out the uh, the windings on the transformer mega them out and see if uh, everything looks okay there as well so i'll come back to this one when uh, when i get some parts and we'll see if it uh, see if it works so thanks for watching this slightly different video and uh, i'll say uh, bye for now folks you're doing a video yeah